Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney. And today, I'm going to explain the full story of Tangled Sundrop. From what it took for it to descend to Earth, to transform into the golden flower, to the moment Rapunzel sent it back to the heavens, we are going to understand the entire history of one of the most powerful items Rapunzel's world has ever known. And of course, if you are new here, are a big Disney animation fan, and want more discussions with our community, then consider subscribing. Also, a big shout out to the Tangled the Series crew for being nominated for seven daytime Emmys. You all absolutely deserve that recognition, which really made me want to talk about the story you all contributed to creating again. A millennia ago, a mysterious event in the heavens divided an ancient power in two, creating the Sundrop and the Moonstone. What caused them to break apart and fall, we don't know for sure. There could have been deities or deities in action, or beings from another realm creating them, or the universe itself spontaneously might have changed, but either way, those forces came and would change Rapunzel's world forever. And let me know down below why you think these powers fell. The Sundrop landed on the edge of a cliff, not far from where the Kingdom of Corona would one day be constructed, and there the Sundrop grew to form a magical golden flower. Throughout the years, people investigated this plant and came to realize that it held a spectacular power. It had the ability to heal any sickness or injuries, even mortal wounds, and it could even restore someone's youth, meaning it could stop people from dying. But while this power was something unbelievable, it would soon be lost. Eventually only legends surrounded the golden flower, but the Sundrop lived on, waiting for the day it would be reunited with the Moonstone. While these powers had come to the world, they were not meant to stay and be separated. Someday, they would be brought together again. Hundreds of years after the Golden Flower had grown, two beings known as Zontiri and Lord Demanitus began to research and compile the legends of the Sundrop and Moonstone, and began to search for those powers. Unfortunately though, Zontiri became obsessed with taking the heavenly objects for herself, which dissolved her relationship with Demanitus and began a long war between them. While this conflict persisted though, both sides came to understand the incantations that were required to unlock the full strength of the Sundrop and the Moonstone. But after Lord Demantis's three pupils were corrupted to become servants of Zontiri, Demantis broke up his research, hid it across the world, and banished Zontiri with all of his remaining power. Demantis also went in search of his former students to ensure that they would not be able to find the Sundrop and the Moonstone and unleash havoc across the world, but unfortunately he passed before he was able to complete that mission. Never forget Lord Demantis. He was an epic man who built some incredible structures, a maze, his own grave. It was incredible everything that he constructed, even a monkey vessel for himself. But that's a story for another day. One of the followers of Zantiri who escaped Demanitus was Mother Gothel, and at the very end of her mortal life, she discovered the golden flower, used her master's research to save herself, and hid the flower from anyone who would take it. For many lifetimes, Gothel hoarded its magical abilities for herself to preserve her beauty and life, but eventually it would be discovered. When Queen Ariana of Corona fell deathly ill when she was expected to give birth, her husband, King Frederick, became desperate to save her life. So he sent guards and his citizens all across the land in search of miracles to keep her alive. And eventually those who went in search found the golden flower. Using the magic of the golden flower, they made a tea from it and saved the queen and her daughter Rapunzel. From then on, the king locked what remained of the golden flower away in his vault, but in fact, what remained of the flower had no more magic within it because Rapunzel had become the embodiment of the Sundrop. To keep herself alive, Mother Gothel went in search of the child, and after discovering the little girl's hair held the healing properties she was craving, Gothel took the baby. Raising Rapunzel as her own daughter, Gothel was able to continue to exploit the Sundrop for another 18 years, until the girl became restless. Rapunzel wanted to be free, explore the world, and find love, but that threatened Gothel's control over the Sundrop, which led her to desire to lock Rapunzel away forever. Through the heroic acts by the man who fell in love with Rapunzel, who is named Eugene Fitzherbert, yes, not Flynn Rider or Horace, Eugene, he came to save Rapunzel, cut her magic hair to allow her to be freed from Gothel's grip, and because of that action, the witch became 
dust. The sun drop was finally free, and that meant the moment where the sun drop and the moonstone would be brought together was fast approaching. In hopes of finding the sun drop, the moonstone sent black rocks out into the world in search of its other half. But when they reached the location where the golden flower had once been, the mysterious rocks were unable to find the sun drop until Rapunzel came to them and touched them. While Rapunzel had been born as the embodiment of the Sundrop, it seemed when her hair had been cut that this magic had been stripped away from her. She had been able to heal Eugene with her tears, but other than that miracle, her connection to the Sundrop seemed to be long gone until the Moonstone's black rocks entered Corona. I still kind of don't understand how Rapunzel was able to heal Eugene because it feels like all of her tears should continue to have that magic within them, but we never really find out what happened to that ability specifically. All we know definitively was that the healing powers she once could easily control were no longer in her possession. When Rapunzel touched the Moonstone's black rocks though, she was granted some of their protective magic, which gave Rapunzel long, golden, and indestructible magic hair. The golden hair had returned, and it was epic. That's how Rapunzel's hair returned for this series, and I thought it worked super well. I loved Rapunzel's hair returning again, regardless of what powers it had. Rapunzel still had the sun drop within her, so she had to survive to make sure the two heavenly entities could reunite again, because they desired to be brought together. While each of these drops may have just appeared to be all-powerful stones, it seems they had a type of living mind that worked within them. Again, I'm not exactly sure how that works, but we just know something was able to drive them together. While Rapunzel didn't know what the return of her hair meant at first, when she embraced the Black Rocks to stop the threat of a boy named Varian, they laid themselves out to form a path for Rapunzel and her friends to follow. They were guiding her to the location of the moonstone. Stone. Raps was going to the Dark Kingdom. As the embodiment of the Sun Drop, many believed, including some of the protectors of the Moonstone, known as the Brotherhood, that Rapunzel was destined to accomplish this feat of neutralizing the Sun Drop and the Moonstone. But Rapunzel didn't get that opportunity to do that within the Dark Kingdom. The daughter of Gothel and Rapunzel's best friend Cassandra had taken the Moonstone for herself, which is probably a really good thing because otherwise Rapunzel likely would have been consumed by the powers reuniting. That was a difficult reality that Rapunzel had been dealing with on her journey to the Dark Kingdom, and luckily she didn't have to die on that day. It really makes her moments with Eugene and Cassandra before Cass stole the Moonstone really tragic. That could have been their last encounters with Rapunzel, but of course, that wasn't the case. Rapunzel made it out of that situation alive, though her destiny to send the Sundrop and Moonstone back to where they came from still existed. While she didn't know how it would occur, her role to play in handling the magic that lived within her did not feel over, and it wouldn't be until a solar eclipse came. Even though Rapunzel had shifted her focus to building Corona after she returned from her journey to the Dark Kingdom, Kingdom, the reality was that her chance to bring the heavenly entities together would come again, for Cassandra was coming after Rapunzel. If you'd like to understand this sister relationship more, I'll leave a link to videos I made about them down below, but most importantly, Cass was making her way back to Corona as well, and would come in time to battle the princess when the sun drops magic would be reduced. When the moon came and blocked out the sun during a solar eclipse, the sun drops powers were greatly weakened, which allowed Cassandra Sandra to call upon the sun drop from Rapunzel, tearing out the magic the princess had been born with. And this was a wild moment to see played out. I'd literally been watching the series for years, so I really became invested in Rapunzel and Cassandra's relationship and the magic of Corona. I had some ideas of what I thought could happen when the time would come for Rapunzel to give up the sun drop, but I never imagined that the sun drop would ever be able to be stripped away from her like it was. All of a sudden, one of the defining characteristics of Rapunzel had been removed by her sister, and she was left fairly powerless. But this was Rapunzel, in my opinion, one of the most daring, adventurous, and mature princesses created by Disney because of Tangled the series. So of course she wasn't going to give up just yet when the world was in jeopardy, because there was someone else in Corona other than Rapunzel and Cassandra who wanted those powers for herself.
The demonic entity Zontiri had returned to unleash her wrath once she finally had the opportunity to take both the Sundrop and the Moonstone under her possession. Luckily, Rapunzel and Cassandra were able to make amends and use a shard of the Moonstone left within Cassandra to battle Zontiri. They took down the monstrous sorceress, forced her to bring the Sundrop and the Moonstone together, and suddenly these two powers were able to be bound again. In the aftermath of them reuniting, Zontiri was destroyed, and all of the magic that existed from the Sundrop and the Moonstone were called back to them. But even though these forces had been neutralized, Rapunzel still had to send them away. Noticing that her family and friends, specifically Cassandra, were nearing death because of the aftermath of this battle, Rapunzel took the single unified stone and used the healing incantation. With the sun drop and the moonstone together again, Rapunzel was able to not only heal everyone she loved, but also initiate the magic necessary through that incantation to send the powerful entities back to the heavens. But let me know down below what your thoughts and theories are surrounding the sun drop and the moonstone. Also, make sure to come check out my interview with Cassandra's voice actress, Eden Espinoza, live on Monday, May 25th of 2020. Subscribe and click the beautiful bell, and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. And finally, as always, thanks for watching, and have a magical day.